I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my daily life living in Nicaragua. If you're a traveler or you are an expat or looking to become one, you have some financial considerations that you may have never thought of before, and the way to keep yourself safe when you're living abroad or traveling heavily may go against your normal decision-making that you would do if you were still at home and doing normal decision-making. So how can you help keep yourself safe and lower your costs of traveling and maybe even make things more convenient? We're going to get to that right after the bump. It's common for people, especially when you're just talking to people who are new to uh, trying to control their personal finances or are, are living at home uh, in their home country, not necessarily with their parents, and uh, trying to save money and be frugal. We often say, you know, avoid using credit cards because of the high interest rates and things like that. It's easy for people to get trapped in a cycle of debt with credit cards. And of course, that's true. I don't recommend that people live on credit. And if you are going to live on credit, definitely you want to avoid high interest credit like credit cards. All of that is absolutely true. So we're not going to say that that isn't true. That's not at all what we're saying. However, the avoidance of credit cards does not actually make sense. Like with most good financial advice, what is good for someone making intentional decisions sounds really crazy to someone who is just haphazardly making bad decisions using the same mechanisms. The things that give you the power to make good financial decisions will often undercut someone who's being reckless with them. So when it comes to traveling and living abroad, credit cards are a really important part of your financial strategy for a number of reasons, and you definitely, definitely should not be avoiding them. So let's talk about how they play into everything that you do. First of all, safety. If you're going to be using money while you're traveling, and who isn't, that's kind of a necessity in most situations, you're going to want as much protection as possible. If you're carrying a lot of cash, that's going to make you a target for pickpockets or being mugged. Now, of course, you may get mugged or pickpocketed anyway, but if those things happen and you've only got 20 bucks on you, it's very different than if you're carrying several thousand and it's meant to fund your vacation, let alone your move abroad. If you were to get mugged and have that money stolen, if it's a credit card, you generally have a way to get it back, especially if you're coming from North America, that is protected. You also have the ability to shut off that card the instant that it is stolen. You don't really have to worry about someone being able to use it. A little bit of preparation for that, and you're going to have additional protections. But that's just what you carry in your pocket. When you're doing a transaction with a business, credit cards, again, give you a lot of protection. The money may be spent right away, but you do have recourse by being able to contact your credit card company and discuss with them should something fraudulent happen. So in general, credit cards provide a really important bit of protection across the board, both that they're safer to carry in your pocket, they don't encourage petty crime, they don't encourage violent crime, and they don't encourage being taken advantage of uh, by a store or a hotel or whatever. And you can use them in a lot of situations where other things cannot be used, such as uh, putting down a card on a hotel room so you can make charges to your room, that you can rent a car and other things. Plus, it is very common for them to come with extra benefits. We're going to talk about that. But just from a pure protection of your money perspective, credit cards are important and savvy travelers generally rely very heavily heavily on credit cards because they give them a bit of separation versus bad things happening with their money. As a traveler or an expat, when you're living abroad from your home country, you tend to carry a lot more money around. You don't have the long-term home that you're used to, at least not for a while, in which you store your money. You may not have a local bank to keep your money in. You may be hitting an ATM a lot more often. And quite often, if you're a traveler, not as an expat, you're likely to be spending a lot more money than you generally would do at home, just because you're going out to more restaurants and stuff. And even as an expat, you're more likely to go out more often. And so there are these trends towards carrying around or moving more money outside of your home rather than in the, say, in the United States or Canada or England where you're much more likely to spend more money, but it's more likely to be at the shops like an Amazon or a Walmart where you're making single large transactions and they may be being delivered to your house and you don't have to worry about going out with money and coming home with goods or whatever. But if you're going to a restaurant, you got to take that money there. So you just tend to be more exposed as a traveler. Plus, you don't know the lay of the land. You're in more risky situations sometimes. Uh, there's just a lot that can go wrong. And of course, you don't know what's right and wrong. So for example, I was in Morocco one time and I got my credit card skimmed. Everything was fine. We were able to shut it off in a matter of minutes. They got nothing. But 
I knew that it happened, and that's something I've never had to worry about in the United States. I've never had to worry about in Nicaragua, but being in Africa, it was something that happened to me, and not a big deal. It made for a good travel story, uh, and no money was lost, but it was inconvenient. We had to shut off the card that we have. If you were working with cash and something like that happened, that money is just gone. If you're dealing with debit cards, sometimes that money can be gone, and there can be nothing you can do about it. Once someone's taking cash out, the bank's going to be like, that's kind of on you. That's the risk of a debit card. And I'm not saying you don't want to have debit. We'll talk about that in other videos. But using debit cards as a regular transaction source, generally frowned upon. You Anytime that you want to use a debit card anywhere except an ATM, you probably want to stop and say, wait, this should probably be a credit card. Let me think about that. A small side benefit that may not apply to everyone in using a credit card is that by using credit cards, they help build your credit. And having credit is a form of protection. It causes things like increased credit limits and lower interest rates and the possibility of potentially get a, getting a mortgage or something like that in the future. Not everyone's going to leverage that within a lifetime, but it is a nice safety net to have and certainly not a negative. So while it may not be a reason to use a credit card, it is certainly not a reason not to use a credit card. Beyond the protection of your money, credit cards actually generally lower or the cost of a lot of things. Of course, you can use them strategically if there's a situation where cash is going to get you a better deal. You can switch to cash. Having credit cards and being prepared to use them and prioritizing them in no way stops you from using cash. You just want to reduce the amount of cash that you carry and use. When you use a credit card, you have a couple of things in your advantage if you're picking the right cards. Now, I did a video about a nine months ago where I talked about the four credit cards that I always recommend and think everyone should have as a traveler, which ones I pick specifically of those four categories, and gave you some background. That'll help you choose the credit cards that you want to use, but without, without going into details, when you do have, whether it's one credit card or many, you want to make sure that they are international cards, meaning no international transaction fees, and they're unlimited use internationally. You want to make sure they have international protections as best as possible. If you can find ones that apply to you, you want ones that give you specific benefits, like I have hotel and airplane uh, uh, cards that give me very specific benefits for places that I use all the time. And you want to make sure that you're getting some kind of points or money back on uh, what your transactions. And this can be as low as about 1% and as high as about 3 in practical usages, unless you're doing very specific things like, for example, example, I have a high return uh, credit card when I use it at the hotel that sponsors that that specific card. So in that one specific transaction, I'll get above 3%. But under normal conditions, I'm getting more like one to two. And while that's not a big deal financially on any given transaction over the course of the year, it adds up. That means if you're using a credit card for all of your expenses, 300 days of the year, 365 days of the year, you're going to get three and a half days completely free in just the bonuses to your credit card if it's at 1%. If you get to two, that's like an entire week of your life completely free. Now, you may not actually take that as a free week, but you could go use it as what we did. We recently had a trip where we paid for flights and hotels using those points. You could be go on a shopping spree with it. You could uh, just you know use it to offset a bill, whatever. It depends on the card you have and the, and the things. But getting that money back is a really big deal, that one to two. And if you can get better, 3% is a huge deal financially when you're using your card all the time for every possible transaction. And that you if you get one that doesn't have transaction fees, if you're taking out cash, you're going to have ATM transaction fees. Unless you get just the right debit card, there are ways to reduce those. But that's anytime you're dealing with other mechanisms, you're going to have transaction fees. You're going to have uh, the fees to, to change uh, currencies, all kinds of things like that when you're traveling, living abroad. Eliminate those with a credit card that handles all that. And your, your rates for exchange are generally the best with a credit card. So you really win over and over financially by using a credit card. Beyond the financial protection items, you often get extra items when you're using credit cards as well. There's lots of bonuses and it's going to depend heavily by card. So these are generalities and you will unlikely get all of them but you will likely get some of them and they're worth investigating when you're looking at cards consider these things because they can be major factors some of those things can include purchasing uh, insurance. So anytime you're buying stuff with a credit card, you get some kind of insurance on it or warranty. That's something that they don't generally talk about, but it can be a really big deal. If you need it, it can protect you a lot and be something you're paying for and don't even realize. They may give you uh, no insurance cost on renting a car. And if you rent cars more than a couple times, that could be savings of hundreds of dollars that you didn't even realize you could take advantage of. So that might be a big deal as well that you can waive insurance when doing rentals. 
you may get access to airport lounges, for example, or other types of lounges. Uh, the American Express Platinum Card is famous for having the Centurion lounges at some airports. The Chase Sapphire Reserve has airport lounges that are there opening now, operated by the club at different places. Uh, different ones have different access to different types of clubs, um, but things like that, lounges and club access is a popular item to have in there. And there's many others. Sometimes you get discounts on shopping at certain places. Sometimes you get extra money back by going to certain places. Sometimes you just get coupons all kinds of things. Take a little bit of time to investigate your credit cards, the ones you're interested in and the ones you have, and see what benefits they may have for you that you never realized. And as a traveler, often those benefits are a little bit more powerful than they are when you're staying at home. And so you may actually be getting uh, a lot of benefit from your credit cards that have nothing to do with the regular credit card features. So definitely check that out. Overall, though, the real thing is there's no negatives to using a credit card under normal circumstances. A few places are going to give you discounts if you pay in cash and totally consider having cash for those things. But for most things, fueling up your car, paying for your hotel, renting a room, uh, get, getting a rental car, taking people out to dinner, doing all those types of things, definitely consider using a credit card. It will probably lower your cost. It'll probably protect you. It'll definitely put less in your wallet, keep you safer when you're going around places and just make your life a bit easier. And should anything go wrong, and this is the slam dunk. Should anything go wrong, you want to make sure you have credit cards with plenty of, um, of uh, cash available on them so that if you need to buy a plane ticket to get out of where you are, you need to rent a hotel, you just need to deal with something, especially when you're traveling, something can go wrong. You want access to enough funds to extricate yourself from whatever situation it is. It could be that you just rented a room and it ended up being the wrong place. It could be that you uh, uh, got to a, a place and there was no hotel rooms and you had nowhere to stay and you just needed to get on a plane and go to a different city or you had to get on on a train or, or someone would take nothing except credit cards. There's all kinds of different scenarios where having access to guaranteed money is going to protect you. And while you hopefully never have that scenario come up, a lot of us do. And just that little bit of comfort knowing, you know what? I can just pay for this upgrade to a room. I can just get on this plane and go somewhere else. I can just take an opportunity. It doesn't even have to be a bad thing. It could be I had this amazing opportunity that would completely changed my life. It's one of the most incredible things ever. And I only am able to do it because I'm able to just put down this credit card and get on a plane and go and figure it out later. And maybe you'll get paid. And that's going to give you an extra little bit. And final, as a final kicker, I want to say the one of the things that people don't realize about credit cards is that they extend your financial power by a month. Now, you have to be careful doing this because this is where you end up in a position where you might end up having to pay interest. And so you want to make sure that you're very well budgeting and know exactly what you're doing and not going to become emotionally influenced by the fact that you have a credit card. But if you have credit cards and you're living on credit, but never to the point where you're paying interest, this is key, never to the point where you're paying interest. If you say, but what if I pay interest? You're going to, I'm going to say, then you violated the fundamentals of what we're talking about and didn't understand the point. You can't can't let it become to a point where you're going to pay interest. But as long as you're doing this, you actually, it's like getting paid 30 days early and you have access to money earlier in your life. And that can be a powerful way to improve your total life spending because it's not a huge amount of money, but your entire life goes up by just a small amount. It's like living your life 30, 30 days earlier without having to wait for the money to come in for that, and credit cards make that possible. That's also how they lure you in, that you want to start living 60 and 90 days early. You can't do that. Those are going to cost you interest, and suddenly you're going to lose time instead of gaining time. So don't be tricked into that. Don't think that me saying use your credit card wisely means it's okay to use a credit card foolishly. You have to use credit cards wisely, but as long as you do, Credit cards provide a lot of protection, improve financial stability, and just things like uh, they talked about on generic expats. Sometimes you got to have an onward ticket, and you don't want to buy them when you don't need them. You get to the airport, and suddenly at the last second, you have to make a purchase, and credit cards are going to protect you. Oh, it's, it's a small purchase, but i got to show that I'm able to buy a ticket out. That credit card may help show that thing and make your life that much easier. So it's, it's not about using them all the time, although I do generally recommend that, but it's about having the power and protection of having that. And it, you'd be surprised how many people decide to travel and actually don't carry a credit card or carry them and don't carry one that actually works when traveling. Like it's not, it's going to be locked or it has huge transaction fees. Take a little bit of effort. Make sure you get one that has no transaction fees internationally and is going to uh, give you some money back and start using it. If that's the only one you have, well, it's better than nothing. And if you don't have good credit, find one that you can get and start building credit. Even if it just has a $500 limit on it, start using it. Use what little bit you can wisely and improve your life. Keep yourself safe. Make things better. Make things smoother. And over time, learn how to use them better. Learn, you know, Work up your credit and get better ones. All those things, you will improve your travel 
and your protections and your expat experience. And as an expat who lives full-time in another country, I use my credit cards non-stop. That's how I order Panitra's Jaw to get delivery of food to my house. That's how I uh, deal with a lot of remote banking things. Like it just makes life a lot easier. Plus, even if you're living at home, even if you're not traveling or doing any of these things, if you're going to be shopping online, never use a debit card. Always use a credit card because that's how you get additional protections and that's how you get that money back. And sometimes that's how you get deals. Think about how you spend your money. Don't use debit cards when a credit card could be used. Always have a good credit card ready to use. Make sure you're getting good ones. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. You can use some of the money that you save on your travel, some of that protection, to buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That's like Patreon comes directly to me and helps make all this channel possible. Hit like and subscribe, and I will see all of you tomorrow.